Hey guys, what's up? Ruben here from the Midnight Garage. So I just went to the local convenience store and I found these. Now I don't know what they're called in Japanese, but in Chinese they're called Kojal. And if you're sick, you wear these to prevent other people from getting sick as well. So let's see. How does it look? Today I'm going to the Osaka Automesh, which is one of the biggest shows here in the area and I'm very much looking forward to it. But uh, since it's on the island, it's not really easy to get to. So the way I need to go there is by the subway. So let's go. Boy, did I bring good weather with me, but uh, it's over there. I'm almost there. I wanted to do some parking lot hunting, but uh, I think I'll do that a little bit later. Hopefully the weather is a little bit better. So there's a great comment by Space Caker saying that I have to use the blue tray to put the money in and that has something to do with the etiquette. Now I know that that's the case, but it's so hardwired into my Western brain that I have to give the money directly to the cashier that just keeps going wrong. So something for you to pay attention in the future videos is how often I do not put the money into the blue tray, even though I'm actually supposed to do so. I know you guys a little bit. I think we first need to go to 6A. Why? This is why. Most of the kanja races that were at the Osaka Automass were parked in Hall 6A. So for me, that was the most logical place to start. So as you guys have heard in the previous clip, it was really loud at the Osaka Automess. It was like people blaring Gangnam style and little pump with the Gucci gang. So it was really hard for me to get some shots in because I wanted to do some live commentary of the cars. So instead I decided to just shoot some shots and then do some commentary later on, which I've dubbed over the video. The first group of country racers that I came across was No Good Racing. So let's start there. The first car that I want to talk about is this EF9 by No Good Racing. Now, one thing that I want to say beforehand is that I'm not quite sure if this was actually an EF9 or a lower spec car that had been converted to a B series later on. I do know that this car had a B series, but since this is an actual Kanjo racer, they didn't have the engine bay show worthy and they didn't want to show it to me. So it could be a lower spec car as well. The main thing that is noticeable is the green and yellow livery, which is heavily inspired on the BP Zippo EG9 from the One Make Race series. I actually know this livery quite well because before the Starbucks livery on Boyd's EK hatchback, we actually thought about doing this BP Zippo livery instead. And I think if I look at this EF9, it looks pretty damn good. If you look in the interior, you can see that there's a roll cage and the full interior had been stripped and is painted white. Now, I'm not sure if the car originally was white, but if you look closely underneath the hood, you could see that it was white as well. So I think the original color was white. It had a single bucket seat and one EF9 seat and some no good racing steering wheel. And other than that, it was pretty damn stripped out. Uh, one interesting aspect is that it retained its power windows even though pretty much everything else had been stripped. I thought that was pretty interesting. If you are familiar with my YouTube channel, you know that I'm a big fan of the EF Honda range and that I'm a big fan of classic racing liveries. So naturally, I was a big fan of this car as well. Next up, we have this bright pink EG Coupe built by Yasu, which you might have seen on the Chronicles before. It features a K20 swap, which was partially sponsored by Hybrid Racing and has around 250 horsepower. Now, when talking to Takuya Ishida from No Good Racing, he said that it was his personal favorite car here at the show and that not because of the case swap but because it serves as a taxi you could actually rent your space in this car and go on the loop or on a track day which i thought was pretty damn cool if we look at the presentation of the car you can see that it has much more of an american show car feel rather than a classic kanja racer feel but i thought it was very interesting that they tried to mix
mix things up rather than making the same car over and over again. If we look at the interior, you can see that it had been painted Battleship Grey, which reminded me a lot of the Civics built by Tactical Art. Now, you do see some of the pink details from the outside back in the inside, such as the passenger side steering wheel. But since No Good Racing nowadays has their own products, you can see a lot of those as well, such as the No Good Racing seat belts, the No Good Racing steering wheel, and the No Good Racing indicator extender. Another very noticeable centerpiece in the interior was the hybrid racing shifter setup with the Chronicles gear knob. I really liked it, I really liked the mechanical feel of it and if I were to go with the case swap once again I would do, probably do something similar to this. Overall I really like this car, it's a very interesting new take on Kanjo races in Japan and it's very interesting to see where Kanjo races are going from here if most of these cars are going to end up looking like this. Moving on from the pink EJ Coupe, we end up with an EK4 hatchback. This one was actually the black one owned by the No Good Racing team leader and it had been specifically wrapped in this Captain America Supreme livery just for this event. Now, if you look in the interior, you can definitely see a more classic Kanjo racer feel with the stripped out interior, the window netting and the bright seats. Now, since this is an actual Kanjo racer and not a show car, they didn't have a show worthy engine base. So I wasn't allowed to take any shots, but they told me that like the EF hatchback, this had an upgraded B series engine, which has more than enough horsepower to go Kanjo racing. I can imagine that you're a little bit disappointed that I couldn't show you more of what's under the hood of the EK4, but don't worry, we're now moving over to Aslan and Temple Racing and they brought a very special car with them. This is an EG6, but this isn't just a regular EG6, this is the current fastest front wheel drive car in Japan. It holds the record of the fastest lap time on Tsukuba with 56.546 seconds, which is incredibly fast. The car is powered by an NA K20A fully built Type R engine with around 300 horsepower. And next to that, it might have one of the most serious aero and downforce packages I have ever seen on a Honda Civic. The owner has spent over $200,000 in perfecting this car and when I asked him about certain details that most people tend to overlook when looking at this car he very enthusiastically started talking about his airbox which he then promptly started to take apart just to show me right in front of everybody. Whereas the regular K20 ITBs are pointing upwards, these were specifically modified to point downwards. This was done because through the front bumper there was a custom built Ram Air air box which could provide the ITBs with cold air which would not come in contact with the radiator and therefore not heat up. It's the little details like this that makes it so interesting to look at this car, especially knowing that this is the current fastest front wheel drive car on Tsukuba. However, Hard Race has built an even faster front wheel drive Honda Civic right now and they're shipping this into japan just to see if it can beat the record of this car on Tsukuba. so it's very interesting to see how that will play out next up we have this ef9 also built by aslan it had a k20 swap and it might look like a pretty regular civic with a k20 swap but it has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve for example the doors were fully made out of carbon fiber so they were super light and if you looked in the interior it only had the dashboard and other than that it was completely stripped and the only thing next to the driver's seat was this cool roll cage now also the trunk was made out of carbon fiber and even the roof was completely cut out and then replaced by a roof made out of carbon fiber which i thought was pretty damn cool the windows of the car were also made out of polycarbonate even adding to the lightness of the car and i believe that even the fenders were made out of carbon fiber so overall especially with the k20 this was a super light car one thing that's very noticeable between the eg6 and the ef9 by aslan is that they both look way too clean to be used for anything other than show cars but they both were definitely race cars and street racers so i thought that was very cool and now we move on to the last big stand which is 5 Mart which is also known as Osaka JDM and they brought a couple cool cars as well. The first car they brought was this first generation Honda CRX which I thought was very cool. It had this very weird scoop in the roof which I've never seen before so if you guys that are very interested in the first generation Honda CRXs know what this scoop is for please let me know I, I have no idea. This CRX was sitting on some Osaka JDM loop five wheels and it had a slightly modified b series engine now next to this blue honda crx they also brought a blue third generation honda civic which i thought looked pretty damn cool as well 
Anybody who knows me knows that I really want to do a third generation Honda Civic project in the near future as well. So I was very curious to see what 5 Mart did with this one. Once again, it had a slightly modified B series engine like pretty much every Kanjo racer. Since there aren't that many aftermarket swap related parts for third generation Civic, it's actually pretty hard to do an engine swap on these models. So even seeing a B series made me pretty happy. Interior wise, it once again had a roll cage and a stripped rear interior. And the two things that were most noticeable to me was the fact that it had matching brides because most of the cars I've seen previously either had a single seat or mismatched seat and this one had two matching brides and the fact that even though it had a roll cage it still had the full roof lining in there. One thing that I really liked on the exterior were these work equip 40 wheels which I thought looks really good. The final third generation Civic that was at the Osaka JDM 5 Mart stand was this white car and this white car definitely had more of a classic Kenjo Racer look in comparison to the other ones which look more a little bit like show car. I really like the spare wheel in the trunk with the stripped interior I thought that looked really cool. It also had the window netting which I'm also a big fan of and as you can see it apparently has a Mugen engine. Now I'm not sure if it is a full Mugen engine or just the valve cover but I still thought it looked really cool. Speaking of Mugen parts here we have this Mugen EF8 owned by Lego 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 on Instagram. Now I am pretty sure that he does not run the Kanjo however but his car still looks pretty awesome. And the final car at the Osaka JDM stand was this 5 Mart Honda NSX. Now I don't think that this car actually runs the loop but I would be pleasantly surprised if it did. It had some cool type R features for example it had a type R shift gator and it also had some facelift parts like for example the front bumper lower half is a facelift part whereas the rest of the front bumper is a pre-facelift bumper. Now most of you guys probably know that the Kanjo race have a history with the Bosozoku bike gangs so it didn't come as a surprise that the Kitan bike factory brought their own Kanjo racer with them. Even though it mainly functioned as a stand to show off the Bosozoku bike helmets I still really liked it. From all the EFs that I saw at the Osaka Auto Mess this one had the most extreme livery which I always think is pretty damn cool and it also had a very cool thing with the front bumper. If you look closely you can see that it doesn't have the indicators but instead had a mesh which made it look pretty damn mean. Also shout out to Bikas Racing aka K-Brake for bringing a Kanjo Racing inspired luxury van with them. I couldn't help but laugh because that thing was just awesome. And that were the Kanjo Racers that I found at the Osaka Auto Mess. In the next video I'm going to show you guys some of the other stuff that I was really interested in so keep an eye out for that. And yeah that's it for today. I hope you guys liked it. Leave a like if you did and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this and then hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one. I'll close off with some shots of the Mode Perfume S2000. Bye.